Constructing a frame symbol is a lot like cooking a recipe. There are hundreds of ingredients, and as long as you pick the right ones and put them together in the right order, you can create just about any military symbol you can think up. When building a frame symbol, here are the five steps you need to follow to do it correctly. The first is to choose an appropriate frame. Next, you add a main function symbol, choose a sector one modifier, choose a sector two modifier, then finally add essential amplifier fields. There's some nuance to each of these steps, so let's break down each of them in detail. In step one, we need to choose an appropriate frame. So you want to make sure you have the right standard identity, physical domain, and status. If you need more information about what each of those mean or how to pick the right symbol frame, we have an in-depth video in the link provided. For steps two through four, we're going to pick and place main function and modifier symbols. These give essential information about what the overall frame symbol is and basic capabilities. So the symbols you choose and where you put them make a big difference. First, let's look at placement. Frame symbols use what's called a bounding octagon for symbol placement, which is just an eight-sided shape that's divided into three sections. Main function symbols go in the center, Sector 1 modifiers go on the top, and Sector 2 modifiers go on the bottom. You can find a full list of main, Sector 1, and 2 modifiers in FM1-02.2, Military Symbols. What's important about the bounding octagon is that it's an imaginary reference guide. You can use it for practice, but when you actually go to draw your symbol, the bounding octagon won't be there. Additionally, all symbols must fit into the bounding octagon. That way, no matter which frame you choose, the symbol will fit. Now, there are a few exceptions to this rule. For instance, full frame icons extend beyond the octagon and out to the frame. Examples of this are infantry, cavalry, and medical symbols. Medical and medical treatment symbols also have a special exception where their sector one and two modifiers are placed to the right of the center line for visibility. Now that you understand where you can put main function and modifier symbols, let's look at what each of them mean. The main function symbol shows the primary function or capability of the thing you're trying to represent. Examples include armor, aviation, or field artillery. Feel free to pause the video here if you want to look over some other examples. For units, Sector 1 tells you about a specific capability of a unit. Examples include bridging, maintenance, or multiple rocket launcher. Finally, Sector 2 generally reflects the mobility capability of the unit, but can also show the size, range, or altitude of the unit's equipment. Examples of these include air assault, airborne, or tracked or self-propelled. One way to remember these three is to think of it like this. The heart makes you who you are, your mind gives you the capabilities to do things, and your feet help you move. For equipment, installations, and activities, sector one and two modifiers don't have any key differences between the two. They both further identify affiliation, capability, special characteristics, or specialty. And again, all of these modifier symbols and which sector they go in are listed in the field manual. So let's look at an example. Here we have a symbol for a field artillery unit. We know the unit's primary function is field artillery because of its main function symbol in the center. When we look at the sector one modifier on the top for its specific capability, we see that the unit can also fire multiple rocket launchers. We then look at the sector two modifier on the bottom and now know that the unit moves on self-propelled tracked vehicles. So all together, we have a field artillery unit with self-propelled multiple rocket launcher capabilities, such as the M270 multiple launch rocket system, or MLRS. And this is just one example. There are tons of combinations. And just like cooking, all you need is the right ingredients and to follow the recipe in the cookbook, which in this instance is the field manual. The final step to constructing a frame symbol is to add amplifiers, which are additional optional pieces of information that go on the outside of the frame. To reduce clutter, you should use as few amplifiers as necessary. 
Amplifiers differ based on if you're showing a unit, installation, event, or piece of equipment. But their exact placement and meaning are all listed in the field manual. In future videos, we'll go over some of them, but the two of the most common you'll see in a unit are echelon in field B above and the unit's alphanumeric designation in field H on the right. Once you've placed any necessary amplifiers, you've officially completed your frame symbol. If you have any questions on anything we went over or about symbology in general, make sure to leave a comment. The Combined Arms Doctor and Directorate is the Army's proponent for military symbology. Make sure to subscribe and follow for more videos. And for more on military symbols, check out FM1-02.2, available at armypubs.army.mil.